Hi guys, Drancer90 here again and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while but we're back. So for today's video, I'm going to be reacting to 10 crazy ways that people have beaten video games. Let's do it. Welcome to Mojo Plays and today we're going over 10 crazy ways that people have beaten video games. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Already done. If there's a weird way to play a game that we missed, please be sure to tell us about it in the comments. Three speedruns at once. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye 007. Multitasking is almost a requirement of the modern age, but this is definitely going the extra mile. Speedrunner Carl Jobst managed to accomplish an impressive bit of multitasking in 2014, speedrunning three of the biggest Nintendo 64 games at the same time. Alternating between The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye 007, Jobst was able to not only beat the trio of games, but to do so in under an hour. His ability to effortlessly switch between the different control schemes is amazing to watch in action. <laughs> Steering Wheel Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Bruh. Three games at once. Three of the biggest N64 games, and you beat them all within an hour at the same time. What is the deal with that? How crazy is that? Like, clearly you have to, you know, know these games inside and out. But if you're me, who hasn't played any of them, like, to completion at all, I can do it. Oh no, no, I don't know how to go into stuff. YouTuber Cesium is quite skilled at tough video games, particularly the works of From Software, but he isn't just good at them. He's able to beat them with a rather odd control scheme. Instead of using the usual controller setup, Cesium uses a mapped USB steering wheel controller along with pedals to speedrun these notoriously tough games. In this case, we're highlighting his run through Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Cesium manages to finish the game in a little though. over 10 hours, and he doesn't even sidestep. Now that's some impressive driving. <laughs> Fishing Rod, Dark Souls 3. I'm surprised that, like... Sticking with the From Software theme, okay, this is Dark Souls silly. 3 players have <laughs> also come up with some unusual <laughs> controllers to use for the brutal game. One such interface is a fishing rod controller. Although it has buttons and a joystick, this odd controller also has a spinning reel that the streamer in question, a twerking Yoshi, has to fight against throughout his run of the game. While most players would probably have thrown this controller back after a few bosses, Yoshi kept this one on the hook and it pays in this unique spin on Dark Souls 3. Hey man, it was so fun to get those kills. That's it, game, good stuff. See you later, dude. <laughs> Blowing into a recorder with their nose. Super Mario World. <laughs> Super Mario World is one of those games <laughs> everyone knows, but few oh. people know it well enough to play it with their nose. Nico Nico user Wacko played through at least the first world of the game by using a program called AudioPad to map the controls to different notes. Then, for reasons known only to him, he decided to control Mario by playing these notes on a recorder, using his nose. Just thinking about our own skill at the game has us thinking we're snot as good as we thought we were. <coughs> using his vision impairment. I'm sorry, but your nose on a recorder to be one of the most famous Super Mario games ever. <laughs> I knew this video was going to be crazy, but I just didn't think how crazy. Mind you, I suppose there are other ways to, uh, you know, use your nose to play a good tune. I'm John Cena! Anyway. 
The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Okay, so I know that I have to make it to the vines on the other side of the room straight ahead of me, but I'm not quite lined up, so I'm going to take one and a half step right this way. People with disabilities have managed to create some pretty impressive workarounds to play their favourite games. And while we were tempted to talk about the man living with paralysis, who played PUBG with his mouth, our pick went to Terry Garrett, a player who lost his sight at the age of 10 and beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Garrett spent five years memorising audio cues and level layouts before he was finally able to play through the game in its entirety. That is to incredible. further assist him, Garrett used speakers to differentiate the direction of sounds, as well as save states in case he messed up. It's inspiring to watch, not only for Garrett's dedication, but also to see how well conceived Ocarina of Time's sound design is to make it possible. <laughs> Okay, this should give me the right lineup to put the sword back. Twitch, Pokemon franchise. I mean, you know, in order to be able to do that with something like visual impairment or the guy with paralysis playing PUBG, I mean, shouts to you guys. You guys are incredible. Um, you know, good for you guys. You're able to still join such a big community. There's one thing everyone can agree on, it's how chaotic and disagreeable the denizens of the internet are. Which is why Twitch Plays Pokemon is so impressive. An anonymous streamer created this social experiment, wherein a Twitch stream's chat comments are able to complete inputs into various Pokemon games. Despite taking much longer than normal given the number of trolls and the contradictory inputs, the Twitch channel has managed to complete dozens of playthroughs of Pokemon games and ROM hacks. It just goes to show that even when trying to cooperate, Twitch commenters can still be chaotic and entertaining. Bongo Clearly there's going to be a Pokemon game, right? The, bongos. the original Dark Souls has inspired a lot of unusual methods for completion, likely due to its reputation for difficulty and its fans' desire for bragging rights. While we considered discussing a blindfolded run of the game, we instead went with an unusual controller, bongo drums. Twitch streamer Bearsley has used some of the most varied methods for beating the game out there. Seriously, he has the Guinness World Record for it. One of these included bongo drums, or at least the bongo drum controller created for the GameCube game Donkey Konga. While not as musically impressive as you might think, his run is still fun to watch. So, he took the bongos from Donkey Kong and used them to do that. I mean, that's just crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be Dark Souls, or I'll play the bongo. Oh, I don't have bongos in front of me. <laughs> Without the A button, Super Mario 64. Mario jumps. It's kind of his thing. And he usually does so with the A button. YouTuber Scott Buchanan, known by his screen name Panacook2012, has done a challenge to complete as much of Super Mario 64 without using the all-important button as possible. While he does use safe states and tool assistance, Buchanan has managed to complete the game with under 20 presses of the A button, as of 2020. Given his devotion to Super Mario 64, we wouldn't be surprised if he manages to make that number even smaller in the future. So he did it without even barely jumping in a Mario game. Here we go! Three games simultaneously. Mega oh, Man X, Mega Man one. X2 and Mega Man X3. We've already discussed a gamer who managed to beat three different games by alternating between them. But how about three different games using the same command inputs? YouTuber T.O. devised a tool assisted speedrun for the first three Mega Man X games. A single controller is wired into three different emulators in order to play them all at the same time. Sort of. With tool assistance, there are some further modifications. So while it may not be happening live, 
The fact that all three games can be completed this way, and in under an hour no less, is positively god level game. See another one, that is just crazy. Pomegranate, Hades. White doesn't sound like a good idea, but uh... um, it actually is, because it lets me see where the juice is. Pomegranates act as important power-ups within the challenging roguelike game Hades. Streamer Dylan Beck, known as Rudism Online, decided to thread some wires through a real pomegranate to make an ad hoc controller. Sliced into 10 pieces, Beck connected the fruit to a circuit board and used the pomegranate to beat Hades. There's palms of power and then there's this thing. Most playthroughs of Hades tend to be messy, usually involving a lot of deaths and trial and error and Beck's attempts get extra messy, given all the pomegranate seeds. Defeating the god of the underworld has rarely been so delicious. Yo! <laughs> Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe okay. and ring the bell to get notified. So, he managed to beat, play, beat a game using a piece of fruit circuitry together. <laughs> Dear, it's just so funny, isn't it? Like, just how many of these, like, how many silly ways there really are to beat games, you know? Um, but yeah, that was it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe down below with notifications turned on or for my latest videos. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought. Um, is there any ways, other ways that you've seen people stupidly manage to complete games? Or, you know, have you tried playing multiple games at the same time to try and complete them? Uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and subscribing. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever it is you're doing. And as always, take care of yourselves.